Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum and welcome again to Ramadan Journey. Uh, I am your host, Arfif Khan. Uh, as we had mentioned earlier, I am the editor of the Ascendant Quran, which is being written by Imam Muhammad al Asi. Uh, he is here uh, as our guest, uh, he'll be our guide uh, through this journey. Uh, we are going to be talking about Ramadan uh, in a little bit more detail today. Uh, Imam al Asi, welcome. Thank you. It's nice being here again. Uh, today we are going to be discussing uh, the first ayah uh, pertaining to Ramadan. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kutiba alaykum as siyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Uh, I'd like to begin by asking you uh, when fasting was made uh, compulsory for the Muslims and why didn't the Muslims uh, have to fast in the Prophet's 13-year mission in Mecca? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-ameen, khatimi al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. The first ayah in Surah al-Baqarah, in the cluster of ayat that speak about fasting, uh, which you quoted. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Before I get to the specific uh, question that you asked, which is the timing of the beginning of the uh, fasting, I'd like to say that, and we probably didn't have enough time to cover this in yesterday's journey, so we will uh, try to uh, begin where we left off, s- sort of. And that is a siyam, outside of its physiological definitions, it, it has a, a more generic and more inclusive meaning and that is to abstain not only from food and water and nourishment and these types of ingested and physical um, uh, partakings that we have on a daily basis, but it's also trying our best to uh, tame our urges. Um, in times past, you've, you've said that a good uh, generic translation into English of the word psalm is abstinence. That's right. And as you, know, you see in the Qur'an, there are two words that sometimes get confused uh, through the translation process or through just the average daily usage of these two words. Those two words are a psalm and a siyam. Both of these are Qur'anic words. Uh, the word as we encounter it in an ayah, in a verse, uh, when Maryam, alayha salam, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Maryam al-Adhara, the Virgin Mary says, إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَانِ صَوْمًا فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيًّا which means, um, for sure, I have vowed to the All-Merciful a psalm, which is translated as a fast. Mm -hmm. And then she goes on to say, and this explains what a psalm means, فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيَّ Today, I will not speak to a living human. So the word psalm here is connected with the urge to talk, to communicate Mm -hmm. with others who are around. This is an area that many people just overlook. They just take it for granted. If they want to talk, they talk. It it doesn't really occur to an average human being that, wait a minute, I'm not going to speak to anyone. And in doing that, what I do is I take control 
of the urge in me to speak, because a lot of people get in trouble speaking, just blowing their mouth out, saying whatever they want to say. So the, one of the um, explanations of the word to fast is this uh, taking control of the human instinct or the human appetite or the human urge. الصوم. إني نظرت للرحمن الصوم فلن أكلم اليوم إنسيا. Now, tra uh, transitioning from this ayah to the ayah that we are with in Surah Al-Baqarah, يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام. So there's a difference. Yeah. So here the word as is used, not the word as That's right, yeah. And as here means not only are we concerned with taking control of our uh, psychological and our attitudinal dispensation to speak, <laughs> But also, we're taking right now control of all the urges and appetites in our oh. living life. And that extends into the physical world, into the appetite that wants to eat and drink and indulge. Here is where, and then it's over an extended period. Uh, Mar uh, Maryam said, نَظَرْتُ لِلرَّحْمَنِ الصَّوْمَ فَلَنْ أُكَلِّمَ الْيَوْمَ إِنْسِيَّةِ So there was a, a limited time, a day, in which she's not going to speak to anyone. But a siyam not only does it extend to all the appetites that we have, it also extends beyond a day to the weeks or the month of Ramadan. Uh, we need to take a short break. Uh, we'll be right back. And welcome back. Uh, we were just discussing, uh, uh, we were trying to understand actually the, the difference between the word psalm and uh, the word CM in the Quran. And uh, 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 I'd like to return back to the question that I was asking you a little bit earlier. Uh, uh, you said it was necessary to understand the meaning of psalm and siyam before uh, answering when fasting became compulsory and, uh, and why the Muslims were not required to fast uh, in the Prophet's 13-year mission in Mecca. And if you can couch that explanation by also going into the meaning of the word taqwa, and uh, telling us what that has to do with CM. Yeah, this is a, a very long and extended uh, subject matter, uh, but we'll, we'll try to economize uh, with the time that we have. Uh, the, uh, to answer your question now, to try to get to the, to the end of that question, and that is the uh, act of fasting uh, was not um, uh, a, an obligation of iman, of commitment to Allah, when the Muslims were in Mecca. The average Muslim today, with the way they approach and the way they understand Islam or the Quran or the Sunnah, they think one of the first requirements after a person says, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah, they think, that has to be followed by a salah and the siyam and the zakah and the hajj. This is the way the uh, conventional mind thinks. But that's wrong. I'm sorry to say. I'm. Yeah, I'm. I know. I'm clashing head on with cultural, conventional, customary Islam. Oh, so I, I think I, I get where you're going with this. That you need a wellspring of iman in order to do the acts of Iman. Well, I guess you can put it like that. 
but I, I, I just want uh, to tie in what was said previously, what we're saying right now. If a siyam, if fasting, mm-hmm. cancel the word siyam, if fasting was a personal obligation, then it would have been normal and natural to expect Muslims to begin fasting in Mecca. But because a siyam is much more than that, and I hope Muslims can break out of their cultural shells and become the social, responsible Muslims that we are supposed to be. When, when fasting meant that it had a social definition to it, then it would seem very reasonable and very logical that fasting was uh, assigned to the Muslims when they became a community, a society, and an organized state of affairs, i.e., when the Muslims were the decision makers in al Medina. That's when Ramadan became obligatory or fasting became a duty of every committed Muslim. So a social fast is like uh, one of the precursors to transformational change in society. That comes along with uh, assuming the responsibility of administration and power and economy and the rest of these uh, responsibilities that all go together. And so at the end of this ayah, it says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that, you see in the Qur'an, I mean, there's so, many to be, so much to be said on this. And uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to move the Muslim thinkers. Muslim viewers are one thing. I'm not speaking to Muslim viewers, even though this is a TV program. My concern is with Muslim thinkers, the element that is required right here. The ayat of fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah begin by speaking to Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who are div- committed to Allah's power and authority. And the Muslims were never addressed that way in, while they were in Makkah. Well, the point is here, before we get to anything yeah. like that, with the, the point that I want to make here is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he calls upon people, and I beg the mental attention of those who are watching, when Allah calls upon people in the Qur'an or individuals, we find that he speaks to one person. He speaks to, Ya ayyuhal nabi, O Prophet. Ya ayyuhal rasul, O Messenger. Ya Isa ibn Maryam. أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ O Isa son of Maryam, O Jesus son of Mary, did you tell people, يا موسى لا تخف يا يحيى خذ الكتاب بقوة So he was speaking to individuals. They were prophets. Or, but he, nevertheless, there's another way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his extended scripture, he speaks to the species, whether it's al ins or al jinn, ya ma'ashar al insi wal jinn, O folks of ins and jinn, or species of ins and jinn. He speaks to humanity, ya ayyuhal insan. He speaks to people, ya ayyuhal nas. He speaks to people of scripture before us. Ya ahl al-kitab. He never mentioned any of these when he's speaking about the act of fasting. He spoke to ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. So why is it in some Muslims buried in their traditional, uh, traditionalism and also under many layers of ignorance, they get offended if, let's say, uh, they live in a particular society, and even if uh, that's their own society, let's speak about cultural Islamic societies. And there's a person who's not a committed Muslim. He's not from al Ladina Amanu, who doesn't observe the fast. Well, that's normal, because Allah is not speaking 
to anyone outside of this bracket called الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So, uh, if a person finds another person in society down the street somewhere, whatever, and they're eating during the month of Ramadan, if they are not from الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا what else do you expect them? Will you expect them to become munafiqeen? To become uh, uh, unnormal, unnatural to their own selves? Let it be. Let life flow with its forces. Iman flows with its forces, and counter-Iman flows with its forces. So uh, in the next segment, I think we will uh, explore the connection between what you just said and taqwa. And uh, we're, not, we're now going to take a short break, and we'll come back uh, right after uh, uh, a few messages from our sponsors. Uh, we'll see you back in a few minutes. Welcome Ramadan. Welcome Ramadan. And welcome back. Uh, in the last segment, uh, we were sort of building up to what we're going to talk about in this segment. And so, Imam, let's talk about uh, the meaning of taqwa. Uh, it appears to be one of the most misunderstood concepts uh, in Islam, even though it's a very fundamental concept. And uh, one of the objectives of fasting in Ramadan is to sort of build up this taqwa. And so what is it, and how do we build it up in Ramadan? That's a, it's, this is a very important question. And uh, truth be said that a taqwa is probably one of the most misunderstood words in Holy Scripture. Uh, it's invariably translated as piety or God-fearing. You know, many times as yours truly here has been thinking through the meanings of the Qur'an, it occurs to me that Muslims will reach a level of understanding of what's being said in the Qur'an, especially when the word taqwa is being used. It occurs many times in its noun formats and in its verb formats, many, many times. Probably venture to say over a hundred times, if not much more than that. I haven't counted it, but it's... And if Muslims could only drop from their vocabulary that translation of the word taqwa as piety, what is pi? I ask myself, and everyone should ask, what does piety mean? It's not, you, in your average life, when you're in, interacting with other people, does it ever occur to you, and you may see the most fervent Believer, let's use the word, I don't use the word believer neither, but for communication's sake here, if when you encounter believers or people who are in temples or churches or mosques or any religious uh, setup, does it ever occur to you, I saw a pious person? The word doesn't have a functional meaning. So let's liberate ourselves for God's sake, let's liberate ourselves from dysfunctional words and try to reinvigorate the words of the Holy Qur'an. One of those words is a taqwa which is right here in this ayah. Allah says that the reason we've been assigned the obligation of fasting is that we gain this feature of taqwa. So now the question is, so after all of this that you said, what does taqwa mean? Simply put, taqwa means avoiding the corrective power of Allah in human society. This takes a public mind. It's not 
It's not an individualistic accomplishment. I mean, that's why it applies to a social group, a ladina amanu. That's right. You see, the beginning of the ayah was, Ya ladina amanu. We're talking about a plurality of people. We're talking about a social uh, gelling of will. And then at the end of the ayah, la'allakum, you in the plurality, in the plural, in the many, in the collective, you in that description may gain this feature of taqwa. So anybody who's talking about uh, taqwa on a personal level is really talking about something which is deficient. Exactly. It doesn't meet all of the definition of the word taqwa especially in this context, because a lot of words in the Qur'an are textualized. They are understood in the context that they are in. So when we're speaking about the assignment of fasting, when we're speaking about observing a month-long fast, we're also speaking about an anticipated or an expected emergence of this public consciousness of Allah's authority and power which doesn't exist among Muslims of our era. You, 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 you crisscross Muslims back and forth in different geographies, in different countries, in different societies, etc. You find that they, their calculations are not Allah's power in life. Their calculations are something else. Financial power, material power, military power, economic power, etc. But none of them is really speaking about, how about Allah's power? Where does that exist? It doesn't cross anyone's mind when they are planning for their own future, the future of their coming generations, the future of their own society. Allah doesn't exist as a real power. And this is where taqwa, taqwa its meaning, is lost to even those who are observing Ramadan. They are physically fasting. They may gain some spiritual um, uh, advantages from the month of Ramadan. But the concept of taqwa is not a social concept. Uh, we, we need to go into this in a lot more detail. Um, unfortunately for this particular program, we've run out of time. And uh, we're going to continue this discussion in the next program. Uh, we'll go into uh, exploring taqwa in, uh, actually in quite a bit more detail uh, as we get uh, moving on. Uh, uh, we'd like to invite you back uh, to the next program. We hope uh, that you do find this interesting enough to join us again tomorrow. Uh, again, it's the same channel, same time. Uh, we'll be continuing our discussion uh, uh, not only on Ramadan, but Ramadan as uh, sort of a set that helps us better understand our deen in a larger sense. And uh, uh, that concludes our Ramadan journey for today. Uh, inshallah, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I'm your host, Afif Khan. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.